Looking at this image now, you may think it took me extensive modeling place and repeated modeling to get it. But in actuality, this just took me some simple processes just to achieve this. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to use the cutting wall system to be able to create complex facade structures that you can use as strong shading device and ornamental elements. So if you haven't done so, make this the video you hit the like button. Subscribe to this channel for more content like this. Don't forget to hit the notification bell because we do this on a weekly basis. With that out of the way, let's jump into the main matter at hand. Alright, so I'm just going to be using this project. It's a small gatehouse I've done before. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create our cutting wall panels which we are going to use for this facade. To do that, we're going to go under this file. We're going to go to new. Under this new, we're going to go to family. Then once we click on new family, it's going to give us option to choose our family template. So usually I use the English metric because I work in a part of the world where the metric system is used. Then I'm just going to go down and I'm going to look for metric cutting wall, this one, cutting metric cutting wall panel, not this cutting wall pattern base, this particular one. So make sure it's it. So I'm just going to click on open to open the template. So now it's open, we are going to see ourselves with some reference planes. So we are just going to be adjusting these reference planes to fit in what we want to do. So firstly, I'm going to click on this reference plane here. So you are going to see this dimension is going to pop up. So this dimension is 1.5 and you also have this EQ, EQ stated here. What this EQ means is that whatever you, if you drag this and reduce it, it is also going to affect the other side. So it means that this is set in such a way that these two sides are perfectly equal. So currently, I want the panels we are going to be creating to be in units of 300 by 300 millimeter. So I'm just going to click on this and change this to 150 because 150 is half of 300 so i want it to span this too so it is in total this is going to be 300 then we're also going to go to this exterior and we're going to click on this and we're just going to change this to 300 to the dimension in between this top so we have this box here so now what we're going to do is we're now going to go and go back to reference plane we are going to be creating a sun shading device that has frosted glass inside just to give us what we are looking for so i'm just going to go to create I'm going to go to sweep, I'm going to go to sketch part, and I'm going to go to set. I'm going to click on pick work plane and I'm just going to pick this reference plane. Then I'm just going, it's going to give me option. I could choose to select the 3D view or I could choose to select any of these elevations. So I'm just going to click on the elevation just to get a more informed view. So I'm going to use this rectangle tool and I'm just going to draw a box here. So once I've drawn this box, I'm going to lock it on all sides. That is, okay, just to make sure what I'm doing is accurate, I'm going to click Escape first. I'm going to click on AL on my keyboard. That is the shortcut for Align. Then I'm going to click on this reference plane, click on this, lock it in place. Click Escape, click on this, click on this ref um, line here, lock it in place. Click on this reference plane, click on this profile line, lock it in place. Click on this one click on this profile line here lock it in place so it means that this profile line whatever however the thing adjusts this thing, this profile is going to adjust with it so now we have locked it in place so well, i'm just going to click on finish then i'm now going to click on edit profiles then it's going to bring another pop-up showing me where i want to edit it from because i'm going to go to the perpendicular side so let me just go to 3d and open 3d view so we are going to see the profile line we've created you can see the profile here so we're just going to go click on this right view to adjust it to an appropriate view so once it's in an appropriate view we're now going to sketch our profile so we're going to be drawing a simple profile we're just going to first draw go to this center point draw a line to 300 yeah so we can get the center point pick the middle then bring it back to about let's say 50. so now in this 50 we're also going to bring out another 50 from here then okay let's reduce this first ctrl z we're going to bring out 25 from here so it won't be too steep then we're going to click on this and reduce it to 25 as well now once this is done we're just going to draw another line here we're going to draw this line to about uh, let's use um, 75 from here so it's going to just look good and it won't look too too overwhelming so now i'm not going to draw this line and join it to this profile line here then once i've done this i'm not going to delete this on our lines here so i'm just going to click on offset and i'm going to be offsetting 15 millimeters then i'm just going to click on make sure i check copy and copy it here so i'm also going to draw another line just to complete this then i'm going to use this trim tool to trim it around then i'm going to assign a material to this i'm going to i want to use a brass material brass or gold but let me just use brass then once i use the brass i'm going to set it i'm just going to 
um, duplicate right click duplicate then i'm going to name this zero one brass then i'm going to click on this box to assign a new material i'm going to go under appearance then i'm going to go under metal then i'm just going to look for a nice brass material let me just use this brass polished then once i've done this before i click on apply and okay i'm going to go under graphic setting i'm going to make sure i click on this use render appearance so once i click on it it's going to apply and i'm going to click apply and okay then i'm going to click finish and click on finish so now our profile has formed so if you go to this 3d view now and we change this go over to this graphics display option and click on this and change it to shaded you are now going to see the gold appearance or the rather the brass appearance so this is looking nice so we are going to create a frosted glass panel within this that is going to serve as our barrier infill just to cover this so now what we are going to do now is we are going to click on create we are going to click on extrusion so now we are going to go back to this reference plane and we are going to click on set we are going to click on pick work plane and we are just going to pick this plane and we are going to go to this view so what we are going to be doing is once we select this extrusion here we are just going to pick this point and select it to this so we are going to click on annotate we are going to click on dimension then we are going to dimension each of these profile lines to this reference plane then we are going to lock it in place click on this reference plane dimension this click on it lock it in place click on this one as well dimension this click on it lock it in place click on this one dimension this here click on it lock it in place so once this is done we are now going to set our constraints so for now just because we are now in the 3d view let's hold on on setting the constraint we're just going to assign a new material we're going to right click duplicate and we're going to call this material 01 frosted glass so now we're just going to assign a new material to this click on this box go under appearance go to glass then we're just going to look for a frosted glass here so we're going to use this clear frosted we're going to go to graphics make sure it's this user under appearance is check click on apply and we're going to click on ok then we're just going to click on finish so now we're going to go to the 3d view so where we'll have option to set it well let's change this to shaded then we're going to go to this right view so we're just going to click on this and we're just going to carefully adjust it we're going to bring this to this point we're going to change this to wireframe so we can see it in a more informed view then we're going to bring this to this point so now we're going to change this back to shaded we can change this to fine detailing and we can now rotate so i think we've created our panels and these our panels are very good and good to go so now we are just going to click on ctrl s and we're going to save this panel so our file explorer is going to pop up just like the way we save normal revit files and we are just going to save it where we want to save it so let's just save it facade panels so i'm just going to click on save and it's going to save the thing so now i'm going to load it into project i'm just going to click on load it to project so i'm just going to load into it into where i want to load it then i'm going to click on ok so once i've loaded it in we are now going to go into the next phase so we are going to be creating a cutting wall family you are going to use for this so it's always good before you create the cutting wall family you are going to take cognizance of how you are going to draw it remember that the size of the panels is 300 by 300 so just for avoiding issues it's better the length we are going to create the cutting wall panel system is going to be in multiples of 300 so i'm going to click on annotate just to do some line works before i start creating it so i'm going to maybe draw from here and just draw this line up till let's use a multiples of 300 that is 5.1 meter or let's just use six meter six thousand so once this is done and i click to this point i know that this cutting wall system is going to start from this point and end in this point so now we've done this let's jump right into creating the cutting wall system so the multiples of 200 is also applicable in the height of it so i'm just going to click on architecture i'm going to click on walls then i'm going to click on this drop down icon and i'm going to go to this normal cutting wall system then as usual i'm going to click on edit type i'm going to click on duplicate and i'm just going to call this 01 sun shading or let me just call this shading panels so once this is done i'm just going to click on ok so now the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to change this cutting panel system i'm going to click on this drop down and you're going to see these facade panels we created before is going to be among the options we can load it so i'm going to place it here so i'm going to go to this vertical grid i'm going to add a grid layout i'm going to change it to fixed distance then i'm going to change it to 300 i'm also going to change the click on this drop down change it to fixed distance and i'm also going to change it to 300 then i think everything else is good to go then i'm just going to click on ok then i'm going to go over to this 
properties panel here and i'm going to set the constraint so currently the constraint is at 2.7 2.7 is still a multiple of 300 so it's good so we're just going to draw our cutting wall system and draw it to this point okay so it's just saying that it's going to can't make facade type replace panels okay it had a little board here so you see the thing i was saying about the size why the size is actually important so this offset here a bit so we're just going to click on this and we're going to try and move this to this point here let me just click on this and click on move and click on this to push it to 100 millimeter then drag this one out i'm just going to try and make sure this settles in at six meters then to resolve this issue like the one that converted to panels what i could do is i could if you have the issue of maybe you have some panels that have not yet changed back to the sun shading panels you can click on it click on this drop down change it to normal cutting wall system then click on delete grid line then click on it again and change it back to the shaded panel so it's going to recreate the panel system so let's just go to 3d and see what we've done so as you can see if you go to this view now you can see how we've created this you can see how this is looking this is looking like something that will have taken much more time to model and if you have a big project where you're using this repeatedly you can use it more extensively so if this video was helpful i think it's very helpful you find a lot of uses you'll you find reasons to use this technique in revit as far as you're working for a lot of people so if you haven't done so make sure you hit the like button subscribe to our channel for more content it's a way of saying thanks also hit the notification bell to get notified you can also check off um, check out some of our full courses we have full revit courses so if you are new to revit i explained everything from start to finish i think i have four of those courses also so you can check any of them out i highly recommend it for new revit users so with that out of the way i'm going to wish you good luck till we meet again in the next video thank you very much